You guys know I love podcasting and listening to podcasts, and I'm guessing if you're listening to this, that you love podcasts too. Have you ever considered podcasting yourself? It is a great way to reach your audience, grow your no like, and trust factor, and not need to show your face unless you want to. If it is something you've thought about, but you don't know where to start, then head over to becomeapodcaster.uk forward slash BAP quiz, B-A-P quiz, to access a two minute quiz that will help you work out what type of podcast might suit you. That's becomeapodcaster.uk forward slash BAP quiz. You're listening to WPC UK, the place to be if you are looking to grow and streamline your business in 2023. I'm your host, Donna Eid, and I'll be walking you through processes, productivity and planning, along with bringing you business experts with knowledge to share. Let's make 2023 the year of success in your business. To the Wedding Procast UK. My name is Donna and today we are talking about New Year's goals over resolutions. Let's get into it. Happy New Year guys. I am so pleased to be back with you. It seems like for ever. I know I usually take a two-week break over the Christmas. This year it was three because of COVID. All recovered now pretty much. Although I have to say I think because I didn't do anything whilst I had COVID, I didn't realise the um, effect it had on my breath. So I know a lot of people have said about the oxygen, lack of oxygen and feeling breathless with COVID. I didn't feel that so much while I was going through it. But afterwards, when I was moving around and, you know, going just going upstairs, I was so much more out of breath than I usually am. So I have noticed that seems to be lingering around quite a long time. But other than that, back to full capacity. So glad to be back on the podcast um, and here with you to talk about this topic of goals and resolutions for the new year. So I spent a lot of the end of last year talking about setting our goals and um, looking at our low season priorities so we can front load ready for the new season and things like that. Today we're going to be looking at, you know, the good old New Year's resolutions. So goals are often seen as something that we do for our businesses, whereas resolutions tend to be that that one once a year, more personal thing that happens. However, a resolution kind of l- makes you think that there was a problem. It's there, there was a resolution to the issue. So depending on how you use the word resolution, it is either a decision to do or not do something, or it is the solution that has resolved the problem. So it's difficult in our minds to differentiate between the two. You know, it is so important, the things that we feed our brain and the words that we use. So when you say resolution, it's like you're saying there's a problem to be fixed and it's you, you're broken. But we're not broken, we're constantly evolving and therefore goals might be a better word to use rather than resolutions. Resolutions fix a problem, goals move you towards an opportunity. So that is why I'm kind of going to stick with goals. Now, I've also spoken about how I'm not a big fan of goals. I prefer milestones. But for this podcast, we're just going to say goals. To me, the end goal of your business is that you can retire happy when you want to and, you know, be able to do the things that you want to do when you want to do them. That's the overall goal. That's why we're in business. I don't know about for you guys, but that to me is the sort of the overarching thing. You want to be able to take your kids to school, pick them up. You want to be able to go on holidays. You want to be able to take a month off in the winter. You want to be able to retire early. All of those things are kind of the big goal as to why we have a business. But the things that get us there are the milestones in between. So you can sort of set a goal is is the end game and a milestone is the stepping stones that you take to get to that goal. 
So I'm just going to use the word goal here, but um, milestones, goals, kind of interchangeable. So looking at the new year, we often will sit there and we'll set New Year's resolutions, but we're not going to set New Year's resolutions uh, because we're going to be a bit smarter about it. And this goes for business and personal. And I'm going to sort of lean more on the personal um, because this is the first podcast back after the new year. And the new year is usually the time where we sit and think about our personal goals. So your business goals, you might have already done, but we are going to touch on them towards the end. So don't go anywhere. Looking at the types of goals that we set ourselves, uh, my daughter came to me last night and she said, here, mum, have a look at this book. I think you'll be proud of me. And I was like, why is that? And she said, well, you know, you were talking the other day about, you know, resolutions and having goals instead of resolutions. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, well, I've written some goals. And I was like, fantastic. Let's have a look. And she'd written some goals down. And one of them was to eat healthy. One of them was to walk more. One of them was to read more books. Now, she'd got a few others as well, but those were the three that I've decided to sort of focus on in this podcast today. And, you know, she was having, we were having a good old chat about different things. And I thought, well, strangely enough, those goals that she has are some of the goals that I have too, but there is a difference between her goals and my goals. So let me just open my book. Did I write? I think I wrote them down. Let me just open my book and we will have a look at the ones that I wrote. So I wrote focus on the sugar habit, walk after eating for 10 minutes and read five real books. And by real books, I mean physical books, uh, listen to 12 audible books. So you might instantly be able to tell the difference between mine and my daughter's goals. But if you missed it, Terry's are very vague. I told her she might need to get a little bit more specific because eating healthy, well, what does that mean? Somebody who is living off of McDonald's and not eating three meals a day, filling up on sugary snacks in between healthy to them might just be eating three home-cooked meals. Somebody who eats lean, eats organic and cooks everything from scratch, eating healthy to them might be being vegetarian three days a week or, you know, vegan three days a week. You know, eating healthy is very vague. Walk more. Walk more than what? Walk more than you did last year walk more than you do on an average day. What does walk more mean? So with those two in particular, I have decided to focus on sugar this year and not sugar as in reducing my sugar, taking sugar out of my diet, but looking at how sugar affects me and how to stabilize my sugar spikes. So I read a book, I didn't read it, I listened to a book um, at the end of last year called The Glucose Revolution, and I will link it in the show notes for you guys. And I mentioned it in my top five books in my last podcast. But that one really opened my eyes and made me think, okay, maybe there is something to this because I feel like I eat a relatively healthy diet compared to a lot of people yet I don't seem to be able to reach the targets that I want to reach when it comes to my health and wellness. So there's got to be something. So I feel like I've got to the stage now where it's more nuanced. It's it's these small little changes. You know, for me, back 18 months ago, I was a lot heavier than I wanted to be. And to reduce my weight, it was as simple as changing the food that I was putting in my body. And that was enough to bring down the weight. But once you get to a certain stage where you are eating healthily, um, so you're putting the vegetables in, you're eating a good variety of food, you're not having overly processed foods um, on a regular basis, you're not having sweet things on a regular basis. It's like, well, there's got to be something else. It's just, you know, these nuanced things like what else can I tweak? What could I change? Is there something that isn't 
calorie restriction isn't reducing the food that I'm eating that I could do that might just trip a switch and that would be the thing for me that's going to just push me to where I want to be. So that is why I'm focusing on sugar this year. And then walk more. I've said that I'm going to walk for 10 minutes after eating. So that is something that comes as part of the glucose revolution. She talks about reducing your um, sugar spikes by actually sort of using up the sugars that you eat by going for a walk straight after eating, or I think it's within 20 minutes. Um, And just a 10 minute walk just to um, burn off that, that initial sugar rush. So that is what I'm going to do. And then with the books, I said I want to read five physical books because I've got a bookshelf full of books that I haven't read yet. So I have promised myself I'm not buying another book until I've read these ones. So I want to read five physical books and I've got my Audible credits and I've got about four in the bank at the moment. So I need to be reading my book, uh, listening to my book. So I want to listen to 12 books. And my walking is going to help me do that because there's going to be 30 minutes a day where I'm going to be out walking. I can be listening to my Audible books. So I want to read slash listen to 12 Audible books this year. So that is a a much better goal than I want to read more books because how do you know when you've successfully met that goal? One, you would need to know how many books you read last year Um, and if you do, then if you read one more book than you did last year, then technically you've read more books Like, or if you read two plural books, you know, so you need to have smart goals. Now, if you don't know what smart goals are, which I'm sure you do because it is something that has been out there for a long time. Um, I'm pretty sure when I was at school, they were talking about SMART goals. So they need to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. And when you put Terry's through that um, SMART goal list, they don't hit it. So we need to look at how we can set up SMART goals. So specific set with real numbers and real deadlines. So rather than saying, I want to eat more healthily this year, and we're going to use year as our sort of time bound deadline, because that's what New Year's resolutions are, aren't they? And what we want to achieve in the next 12 months. So rather than saying, I want to eat healthily for the next 12 months, say, you know, I want to eat two meals a day, if you're not eating two meals a day, or like for me, it's my, uh, the sugar stuff that I'm going to be looking at. So for me, I would be saying, you know, make sure that I have a starter salad before my dinner every day. That's part of the glucose revolution. One of the things that she says in there to make sure that you're having, eating your foods in a certain order. So it might be that for every meal I, for every dinner I have, I'm going to have a small starter salad. So that is specific and it's measurable because you'll be able to see how many times I do that. I can literally tick it off on a chart, on a calendar, whatever, to say that I've done it. Whereas eat healthily, because you've got no parameters around it, it's very hard to measure whether you've actually done it or not. So um, that kind of takes in measurable as well. Make sure your goal is trackable. So by having it be specific, then you can make it trackable. Attainable, work towards a goal that is challenging but possible. Now, a lot of things seem impossible and aren't, but a lot of things also (laughs) you seem to think are possible but possibly aren't possible in the time frame that you've given them. So for example, if you didn't make £100,000 last year and you decide that this year you want to make a million, the likelihood is it's not going to happen. Now, don't get me wrong, there are people out there that could make a million in a year from nothing. They are few and far between. To have something that is more um, realistic as a goal would be better for our mental health. Like, you know, if you put a goal out there that is so far out there that it just seems crazy, then you're going to be putting either putting a huge amount of pressure on yourself to try and reach it or you do the other thing that it is so far out there that your brain kind of switches off going well you're not going to be able to make that happen anyway so you just kind of carry on and then you're not even working towards that goal 
So Mel Robbins did a YouTube short about vision boards. And she said so many people like put these really lavish things on their vision boards, like mansions, you know, a a holiday island, you know, all of this stuff. And it's just so far out of the realm of possibility for the time frame in which you're giving it that you're not going to get there. And she said, like, if you put things on there that are realistic, that are attainable in this time frame and it's always better to work with a shorter time frame because I think you know one thing we have learned over the years is that our attention span is getting shorter and shorter and shorter you know we went from watching feature length films to watching 15 second clips on reels and being quite satisfied with that thank you very much haven't got time so when we're looking at 12 months and what is actually achievable in that time don't don't push too far Make it challenging, but not impossible. And then realistic, be honest with yourself. You know what you are capable of. You also know what you're not capable of. And that is something that I have been sort of really coming to terms with in 2022 was the amount of stuff that I was trying to get done and the amount of time it actually takes to do those things. When you are all things in your business, it is so hard to get everything done quickly. It's just, it's pretty much impossible. So be realistic about these goals. You know, I've always said I like to work in threes because three to me is the magic number. So three big goals for the year You know, if that was setting up your own podcast, it was launching a new product or service and something else that I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, If you had those three things, those are big things to get done in a year. So make sure that you are being very realistic with the time that you have available and the resources that you have available to make your goals a reality. Don't, and this is this is something that I have decided to do, is that with my New Year's goals is not to start with the end goal, but to build up to it. So think of it, if you are a runner, if you, well, not if you are a runner, if you're not a runner, and you decide, I am going to run this year. This is my New Year's resolution. My New Year's goal is to become a runner. And you decide that on January the 1st, you know, three days ago at the time of recording this, you're going to jump out of your door. You're going to start running, you know, Forrest Gump style. Well, I can pretty much guarantee that if you are not a runner, that you are going to get 30 seconds down the road, maybe not even that. Um, You're going to have a stitch. You're going to be out of breath. You're going to feel like you're going to collapse and you're going to turn around, walk back in your house and go, yeah, I'm going to give that one up. Thank you very much. Because we can't start with the end. So for me, when I'm saying that I want to walk 10 minutes after every meal, I know that for me, It is not realistic to start doing that from January the 1st and get up every day and do those three walks. It's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Why? Because it's like going on a diet, like, you know, starting a new diet in January. The reason a lot of people fall off is because they make such drastic changes all in one go. So if you woke up on the first day back at work this year and was like, everything is starting new you probably find that it all goes to kind of crap by the end of the first week because it's too much change all at once. And we are creatures of habit. We don't like massive changes. Like, you know, I'm not somebody who likes change full stop, but there are other people that are quite happy with change. But it is a progression. You know, changing everything all at once is like taking a fish out of water. And it's just not going to be conducive to long term change. So if you want your goals to have a long term change on your business, on your personal life, then they have to be something that is realistic for you. And for me, getting to the end of the year and walking three times a day after my meals is much more attainable, much more realistic than me saying that from January the 1st, I was going to do it. So I have decided that come Monday, this coming Monday, if you're listening to this when the podcast comes out, this coming Monday is when I'm going to start this 
and I am going to start with the 10 minutes after my breakfast. And I'm just going to get that done because it's the first one of the day. It's like rain or shine. I'm just going to get out there and do it. Um, And I am going to start with that. And that will probably be January. If I'm feeling comfortable and confident and maybe on days when it's not raining, I might go out at lunchtime as well. But I'm not putting that pressure on myself to get three times a day done from the start because I know that that's not going to work. And then the last part of the SMART is the T, time bound. Give yourself a deadline. So we are making these goals for the year. You know, our New Year's goals are for the year ahead. But we also need to break those goals down so that we can get to them by the end of the year. Because we know that if we leave them and we're just like, yeah, that is my priority for the year. That's what I'm going to do by the end of the year. And then we put them in a box, just put them in a cupboard, you know, put them in a drawer. Then what are we doing to work towards them? So a really good idea is to break them down into 90 day slots and then break them down from there. So what do you got to do in the next 90 days to move you closer to your goal? So what are you going to do in the first quarter that's going to put you in the right place to be able to reach those goals by the end of the year? So by doing that, you are going to make it much more likely that you are going to achieve those goals. So what I want you to do now is I want you to take out your 2023 goals for your business, the ones that you did last year at some point, you know, towards the end of the year there, or your New Year's resolutions, put them in front of you and just look at them and do the smart check. Are they specific? Are they measurable? Are they attainable? Are they realistic? And are they time bound? And added to that, have you broken them down into smaller goals if that time limit is way off in the future so that you have a more tangible goal to meet in the meantime, that milestone that's going to get you to that goal at the end of the year. Okay, so that was my little review of goals, resolutions, and what it looks like to be starting 2023. I hope that you have had a fantastic start to 2023. I hope you are raring to go and really in a positive mindset. I know it can be so difficult. People have had a really rough time over this holiday period. I know several people that have really struggled with one thing and another. So it can feel a little bit deflating, I think. But nothing kind of gets you um, going more than getting back to a normal routine um, and getting back to what we do best just to sort of bring that normality back so that we can get refocused and start to push forward. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I am going to be back next week. And we are going to be talking about growing your business with advertising. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button where you listen. Don't forget to share this episode with somebody who you think might benefit from it. And I will see you next week. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.